Is Ed here? We're on. Yep, he is. There he is. Better. Good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, February 9th, 2021 Selectman's meeting. And we have all of our selectmen are present. We have the town manager, the town finance, assistant finance director, I guess, is the town planner, the town clerk, and uh, various assorted guests. Um, please stand with me and salute the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, United States of America. to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is we have our uh, approval of the meeting minutes from January 26th. So moved. We have no okay. Motion to accept in a second. If there's no other discussion, I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. We have our first public comment. Is, uh, did anybody send any emails or anything, Patty? For public comment? No, I haven't. Okay. Is, um, we do have two public hearings tonight. Is one on the credit enhancement agreement and one with the medical marijuana storefront license. Um, I see that the uh, owner of the uh, medical marijuana storefront license is he here on Zoom with us, so I'm going to start first. with him. Is um, yeah, this is a storefront on 357 Portland Street? Kind Farms, I believe it was, is, um, is Paul Venuti. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? Not too bad. Um, if you could just give us a little bit of a background. Okay, Kind Farms uh, has been a medical provider for the last six years uh, in York. And about three years ago, we decided to start relocating our operations over to Berwick. So uh, that began with, you know, uh, planning board meetings for uh, approvals of cultivation facilities and eventually uh, resulting in a storefront. And um, it took about, uh, about two and a half, uh, two and a half years to put together. And uh, we culminated with our first storefront, which is the one that you see on 357. Uh, which is the medical storefront and then if you've also been by lately you'll notice there's also a storefront next door uh, going up that should be done in about a month and a half hopefully james do you have something to add in here i just add that uh, mr venuti has submitted um, the licenses and all requirements of the ordinance um, and all um, abutters within 200 feet from Kind Farms has been notified and we've received no, no comments. Um, we haven't received any formal complaints in the code or planning office. Um, and like Paul said, he's, he's owned property since 2017 in Berwick. Are there any questions for Mr. Venuti by the board? Paul, Hi. What, is the, what is the building inside the building, that cement building in, is that a grow room? No, it's a security vault. Oh, it's a security vault. Yeah, it's literally a vault. That's a that's a vault room. Oh. Yeah, it was a little bit. We designed it a little bit differently than we did the other one. A less, little bit more of an efficient process uh, oh. uh, than the other one. So that it looked like an elevator shaft going up for a couple of days, right? That big. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so yeah. that's a security room. And what do you do with yeah. that? You put leave your money in there, or you you. Uh... Oh. All the product. product, all the product goes in there. The money is taken away on a daily basis, but the product would be left in there just for security purposes. So they clean up the, all the product goes in there every night. Yeah. Yeah. Like a jewelry store. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's same see. thing in the other store, the medical store, the medical yeah. facility, all the product goes away every night. Okay. Huh. Interesting. 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Good. It looks good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yep. Any other questions from the board? Is uh, any other questions for anybody else participating? No? Is, um, if not, is, um, I'll go down through the roll. Is, this is for the date of the license. I'll go through that first. The date of the license starts February 9th, 2021, and is non-transferable and expires one year from approval unless revoked sooner by the municipal offices. So with that, I'll go down through the roll. Is Ed? Tom, do you need a motion first? Yes, please. Oh, yes, we need a motion. Sorry about that. <laughs> do we have a, we have a motion? Second. <laughs> Is, uh, all right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, I'll go down through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. It's five nothing. All right, is uh, we'll have that certified and uh, get your license to you. Great, thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you. Thanks. Thank have you. A great, have a great night. Stay safe. You too. We'll close that hearing, and now we'll open the hearing on the credit enhancement agreement. This uh, credit enhancement agreement goes hand in hand with the TIF district that was done over four years ago. Uh, the TIF district was a 20 year uh, period. Uh, already we're uh, in our fourth year, so there's only 16 years left on the TIF. Uh, what this agreement is, is with Great Falls Construction. It's an agreement for, um, that basically they pay, they only pay, they pay their taxes, which includes all the new uh, construction that they do, but all the new construction is sheltered. It's not a part of the county or school district uh, valuation. It stays separate for the remainder of the TIF. Um, and what we do is an enhancement to try to help them uh, improve and grow their, uh, their development. The first seven years, the agreement goes, they, we will return the uh, taxes to them once they've paid them, the taxes come in and we turn around and we will reimburse them on just the new value of 70% and the town keeps 30%. Each one of those, they have to use their uh, reimbursement for developing their property and we are, have to use ours for economic development uh, things that we do here. It could be new sidewalks, it could be hiring an economic development director, a number of things. Um, once that seven year period is done, there's a remainder of nine years. And when that nine first year starts there, it's a 50-50 split. Uh, they've had an opportunity to really uh, grow, hopefully their project, I'm, you know, probably see that done a little bit sh shorter period of time in seven years, but um, so it's an incentive that uh, helps them be successful. And, and we definitely want anybody who's in the, within the TIF district, district, TIF district to um, uh, be successful. And um, so any questions on that? Any questions to Steve on the enhancement? No. Nope. Both parties have been uh, looked at this. Their attorneys and our attorneys have looked at this. And we've gone back and forth, James and I, talking with them and making a few changes here and there. But it's a very good uh, incentive for them to uh, continue to build and, and um, fulfill their project. So, um, Steve, is, is, um, you know, we had discussed before about um, the amount of money that they put into it, into their project. Is, um, and the, the money that they put into the project just goes into the, the building of the project itself. It doesn't go into the road work or anything like no, that? No, none of the underground uh, work 
is considered, it's, it's, yeah, it's only buildings as we go up. Um, and the, the assessor will separate that. There'll be a special account. It doesn't go into our general fund. That money goes into a specified account that we have just for TIF and the credit enhancement agreement. And then it goes uh, out to, into their special account. Uh, to, uh, so we both can track um, where the money's going and what's going in and out. So it's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good agreement. Yeah, and as Steve, as Steve mentioned, is the, with the, the TIF district, is the development that goes in there doesn't count towards the town's valuation right. as far as schools and things like that. No, that's one of the things in North Berwick is they had a TIF agreement with Pratt and Whitney, and so for many years now is their valuation has been held at a lower level. And now that I believe it's ex expended... Their, their time lot, and so is we should see you know them picking up more of the the tab this yep. time around. So, um, if there's no further discussion, I'm looking for a motion to accept the credit enhancement agreement as presented, and to authorize me to and authorize Steve to sign it. I'll make the motion. We have we have a motion and a second. In no further discussion, I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. And with that, I'll close that public hearing. All right, that brings us to reports of committees. We have a report from BCTV committee, or BCTV. That's the committee over there. Yeah. Um, good evening. I just wanted to kind of bring you up to date before you saw my budget this evening on the fact that BCTV turns 10 years old this year. Wow. Um, we actually started this whole process back in 2009, but it was 2011 when the equipment was actually purchased and put in. So that's kind of an exciting time for us. Um, this year on cable um, franchise fees, we lost approximately $2,500 in franchise fees due to people cutting the cord, which I can understand because it's really expensive. Um, unfortunately, that's what funds BCTV entirely. So in order to help us sustain what we've got going and continue, I'm looking at putting forth a warrant article in June that basically allows BCTV to accept monies, donations, and sponsorships that will fund our operating cost and capital expenses going forward. I don't anticipate that will cover all of it, but if we can make up the difference that we're losing with Comcast right now, that would be a great improvement. Um, the other piece that I wanted to let people know about is that I am again working with the Community Television Association of Maine. Um, we have a new bill before the legislature. It's right now in the revisor's office and it's called LR 463. And basically what we're lo looking to do is get our franchise um, agreements under the Public Utilities Commission. And what that would do is it would give some teeth toward, and I'll give you the example of me, for instance, two years in a row, I have asked for things that we're allowed to ask for in our contract, such as the number of cable subscribers, um, what went out, what comes in, that type of thing. And they have completely ignored our request. And what I've been told is unless the town hires a lawyer, which I don't think we should have to do since it's an agreement that was signed by both parties. Um, we don't get any information from them. So by putting it under the Public Utilities Commission, what happens is now the franchise agreements are all handled by them and the Attorney General, and, and there'd be a little bit more that we could ask for and get, hopefully. The other thing that this do, does is it will increase the franchise fees for other stations to the 5% so that they can fund their stations like we're funding ours. And it requires them to upgrade the facilities. In our first bill, 
what happened was they're coming back and telling us that we can't go to HD unless we pay them $5,000 for a new piece of equipment and then pay them $700 to $800 a month to go out in HD, which was never supposed to happen. That's their equipment. We shouldn't be paying for their equipment, but they're going to hold it up in court as long as they can. So this piece of it would address what we must have missed in that first bill and hopefully stop what they're trying to do right now. Um, any questions on this? Now, who tells you, Terry, who tells you how many people dropped off using uh, Comcast or whatever it is? Comcast would they, tell me that, but they won't give us the information. What's so what happened? 20, how many people is that $2,500 amount to? I don't know because I don't know what their subscription was. It would all depend on what they were paying for a subscription, whether they got just basic, whether they were getting additional services. I, I, don't, I can't tell you. It's a bunch of bulls. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I agree. Um, what the and, hell can we do about it? Well, and, and the other problem is I've, I've kind of heard through the grapevine and on the Facebook pages that people are really upset that we went with Comcast and that we did a 15-year contract. The reality is we had no choice. We couldn't negotiate with anyone else because no one else will touch us. They've got this internal agreement between Time Warner, Spectrum, Comcast, that they won't touch each other's property and we can't negotiate with anyone else. That's right. So I couldn't, we couldn't go outside of Comcast. We were stuck, just like other towns are stuck, with what we've got. Um, and so we, I think the PUC, if it goes with the PUC, that might change all that. That's kind of what we're hoping, too. We're thinking that would have a little more oomph to it, and there wouldn't be as much, and I call it stupid, but, you know, basically taking advantage of municipalities. No, we, can't, we, we can't hire a lawyer to ask the question. Yeah, and that's just it. You know, if you have to hire a lawyer every time you make a request that's in your contract, that gets expensive. Mm. So, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, now we have Envision Berwick and Jeremy Caston is on board. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing? I'm good. I actually had, did have a question for you, Terry. Um, did you walk away? Are you far away? Where were you laying? Uh, I just wanted to know, <clears throat> I mean, it's sort of half suggestion, half, uh, half thought, which is just if this um, continues to be an issue, it might be worth kind of trying to make a stink in Foster's or, you know, uh, make, making a story out of it because there's definitely, it's pretty corrupt. And, and this is definitely a small town versus you know, big corporation and it and it's it's a it's a story worth telling. And and the work that you've done, you know, it's such a huge body of work. Anybody who dug in, any any reporter would see that that, you know, what you're pulling off with 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 what they're uh, you know, the 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 tight budget and the 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 little bit that Comcast is is allowing, they they, you know, they they need to be <clears throat> They need to be more frightened of us and and it, figuring out a way short of hiring a lawyer would be i think useful oh yeah no it's a good idea real good idea yep no i i completely agree with you there have been several articles that i'd be more than happy to share with people that have been written in other states um and it addresses the same issue but I completely agree with you, and the Community Television Association of Maine is definitely looking at producing some public service announcements as well. A anything we could do to, to kind of shame them into behaving well. Yeah, that'd be great. Be good. You can shame Comcast? They, they have no shame. <laughs> I don't think so. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hi, everybody. We're, you know, this is like my first really my first week on in some ways, but but I'm, I'm uh, starting to try to juggle a couple of things. So I'll just give you the kind of uh, rough and loose update. I've met with a bunch of people and trying to pull a, a lot of things together, but the um, major focus for Envision Berwick at the moment is um, messaging and branding. We, we want to create um, a low level positive hum 
coming from us through social media and otherwise of all the stuff that's going on all the time. Um, whether it's, you know, the programming at the library, you know, obviously this week there, there's the, the farmer's market on Sunday, but it seems like there's, there's you know, and now with, with rec, there's gonna be a lot going on and a lot of messaging to get out there. And that plus, you know, just nice images of the town, trivia, um, we're, we're, I'm working with Marie and Elise who uh, did, did the Newtown branding and uh, design the signs to uh, put together uh, sort of uh, an outlay of material so that every day uh, there's, there's information and positive information coming from us um, that is connecting, you know, it, it should be the connective tissue between the, the, the spokes of the wheel, the, the library and public works and um, you know, all of it. And, and so I'm just trying to lay that groundwork. I had a great conversation with Sharon at the library today, Lisa and, and um, uh, Angela and I met last night for several hours and actually uh, Marie and Elise and Angela and I all had a long Zoom conversation yesterday. So we're, we're, we're connecting the dots there and that's, that's the big goal at the moment. Um, I'm meeting with Steve, I think next week to talk about um, and and talk to Lisa about bringing back the uh, Berwick snippets, but uh, possibly doing a direct mail piece, maybe four times a year, where all of the um, departments from library direct to you guys, whatever we, we the messaging, you know, letting people know what what they're going to be voting on, and and hey, you know, soccer tryouts are coming up for you, soccer, and all of that. Um, pushing that back out there at the same time so that we're not just covering this digitally, but you know, also you get something in the mail four times a year that, that is specific to the town that Elise hopefully will design so it'll look slick. If people are thinking about starting a business here or moving here, there's, there's something physical that looks good and modern, but um, you know, uh, embraces our, um, our sort of rural heritage and you know, not changing things too much, keeping Berwick snippets, having Lisa write that, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's just a few of the things that we're working on at the moment, um, but those seem to be the big ones that are worth getting into. Awesome. Any questions of Jeremy? I'll just Sounds say good. That we really wanna get engagement up. Um, I, I, I want in the next six months, I would love to see, I would love to have enough people interested that we can get back to where where it seems like, you know, er, everything was when James and Serena were were, were we toddlers in, in Vision Berwick and, and going door to door and, and there were enough people to, to bust out into committees. There's so much great, uh, there's so many great projects that uh, the, the wheels were in motion. And I feel like we need enough people to amortize those projects so that, you know, economic development and, and sustainability and agriculture and, and, and uh, you know, all, all of these pieces, you know, the, the riverfront and, and the waterfront, they all just need people who are interested in them to, to give up some of their time. And I think enough new folks have moved to town in the last few years and continue to, that it's time for them to step up and, and, and make stuff happen. A lot of positive energy. energy. <laughs> I would love to see the, the historical society come back. I mean, I would love to see a, a, the art association in some form as well, but I think the historical society is really a priority and, and, um, and I wanna find, if anybody knows somebody who would love to, to take that on, there, there are parts of it that Lisa in, was into, like, such as finding a space, but she doesn't want to run that stuff and she never did. She kind of got stuck with that hot potato, but there's going to be somebody or several somebodies who, who, who want to take this on. So um, let us know. We're, we're, we're actively looking for that person or people. Yeah. Is, uh, is, uh, I, I, I just, you know, put in a little bit here also, you know, I, I've, I've been involved with Envision, you know, off and on. I more more off lately, obviously, is um, but is you no know, to your point, Jeremy. Is one of the problems I saw is that there are so many great ideas out there, 
and we tried to do too much all at once, and right. there, there just were not enough people to sustain that. You know, we did the waterfront, we did the trails, we did the the, the Great Falls Park. You no, know, we just tried to have too much going on. I think, and I, I think that you know we need to more focus on how we can integrate all those things together to work in, in one unit instead of many separate units. So absolutely agree. And 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 I will say I feel as though um, you know it's 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 been that way with the town in general, really. You know, the library runs their own website. And 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 you know the farmers market is doing their own social media and and that's fine. But it would be in, in keeping with that theme, Tom. I think it'll be good to start to think of this as as um, a system. And um, right. you know the trails connect to 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 Great Falls Park, and that connects to the library. And if if we start to think of it as as all parts of uh, uh, pieces of a, a, a larger system we can divide that work and conquer it and find people who are interested in that waterfront park and they just make that happen. And people who wanna focus on trails should just let them work on that, but but have a big picture in mind. And, and you know, I wanna work on it all, but I think um, I'm probably better suited to be the, the cheerleader and somebody who's, who's bringing those people in who are really gonna be um, experts. At, at those individual projects. Well, you definitely have the energy for it. So, is uh, ho hopefully you can make things happen. And I have a feeling that you know once you know people can safely you know start getting together again, is you're going to see a lot of pent up you know energy willing to do things. So, is uh, for sure. Now is the time, though. I said to Lisa last night, and and. Uh, she was tickled by this, but I think it's true. This is our, our, our time to put the rebar in to everything we're doing. We have this great moment where we're all at home and you nobody has an excuse not to show up at meetings because it's just, you're at home, fine, get on Zoom. Here's the meeting, it's once a month. And and it gives us a chance to emerge like a, you know, out of a, like a butterfly at the end of the pandemic and, and the edge is coming in and everything's gonna change really fast. And I want to keep our eyes on that and not, you know, the truth is more than all the things I'm excited about. I also want to make sure that we protect the things we love. And it's really, it's, it's going to be more and more important. And, and once I can get these balls in motion, I, I want to focus on, on you can the, give the ag yeah. stuff and what make sure that, that the farms oh and the farmers and, and the open spaces get, that, that we continue to think about that because it will become suburbs so fast and I've seen it happen in, in several places I've lived. And I'm worried about that. All right, thank you very much, Jeremy. Is, uh, that brings us to appointments to the Envision Berwick Committee. <laughs> is, uh, hey, Mike. Is, um, um, what's that? I have to go. I have another meeting I have to go to uh, on Zoom. Okay. Clock. Okay. All Thank right. you very much. Thank you, Mark. Bye-bye. Bye. Yep. And, um, and we have three three appointments to the Envision Berwick Committee. We have Dan Miller for a two-year term, Marie Miller for a two-year term, and Rick Vandenberg for a reappointment to a two-year term. Is uh, I'll open it up to... Uh, Dan and Marie, is uh, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves. Oh, there we go. Got to, got to get the mute button down. Um, uh, I'm Dan and my wife Marie. We we moved to Berwick uh, two years ago, and uh, one of the things that really attracted us to this community is is kind of that sweet spot of of a lot of stuff about to happen. Um, and you know the big part obviously being the edge downtown and and we wanted a community that we could be a part of that so. yeah and at the same time uh we had lived in portland oregon for a long time and we'd always wanted to kind of get back to that we both came from new england and we wanted to get back to that kind of that small town feel so um we, you know ever since we moved here I, almost every day i'm just like i love this town i love this town so sort of you know what jeremy was saying like 
um, this town is so special. Like we've just found all the like outdoor adventures and it's just a really, really awesome town. And so sort of hitting on Jeremy saying, you know, kind of preserving all that, but also that, um, you know, the excitement of seeing what's going to happen. You know, when we first drove into Berwick to see the prime tanning and, you know, now just to know that's going to be a little downtown there. So that's, that was kind of what drew us in really. Um, my, my sister had kind of keyed us into Envision Berwick uh, when we were house hunting. So that's why we moved here. And so of course, like the week after we moved here, I emailed James and said, oh, do you need any help on Envision Berwick? <laughs> <laughs> He never says no. <laughs> no, we, 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 we never refuse volunteers. Do anybody on the board have questions for Dan and Marie? Just a, just a comment. Uh, we certainly appreciate you taking the opportunity to volunteer your time and, and efforts into um, making Berwick a, a better place. Uh, and it's already good, but you know we can always search and, and, and seek for something uh, better. And I think we're heading a, in that direction. And we've seen a lot of energy and progress over the last uh, nine, 10 years and, and certainly excited to see it uh, continue. So thank you for your interest. And we certainly appreciate new energy uh, coming into the group. So thank you. All right, we'll take uh, individual appointments. Do I have a motion to appoint Dan Miller to a two-year term to the Envision Committee? So moved. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. There's four for you. As do we have a motion for appoint Marie Miller to a two-year term to the Envision Committee? So moved. There's second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. Thank you, too. And congratulations for putting your time in. We, we appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Thank you. You'll have fun. Um, we also have a two year reappointment. For Rick Vandenberg, is I don't think anybody on the board needs to hear any more about Rick. I think we all know him pretty well by now. Um, do we have a motion to reappoint Rick to the Envision Committee for two years? So moved. So moved. Motion. We we'll have a second. Second. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Ed? Can you hear me, Ed? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. All right. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Um, we have nothing under unfinished business. Is our town manager report? We've been spending most of our time finalizing the budget, meeting with department heads. Uh, we, tonight we will start uh, review. Of my budget. Um, just more exciting news at Great Falls uh, Construction had people over here this afternoon or all morning. Uh, James told me that they got their demolition permit so you should start seeing the buildings emptied and coming down hopefully within the next few months. So and then you'll it'll really change but it's, it'll be exciting to watch. So I think at this point that's all I have. Any questions of Steve? not we'll move on as I have no communications that brings us to our accounts payable we have a payroll warrant number 48 for the amount of sixty seven thousand nine hundred thirty three dollars and thirty six cents We have an account payable warrant, the amount of $209,559.35. And 
We have a payroll warrant of 87,000, a payroll warrant 49, $87,439.24. I'll make a motion to pay our bills. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. Thank you. Now, under new business, we have an impact fee schedule with proposed amendments. As uh, James and I were talking, oh, James will talk a little bit about it. Yeah, just real quickly, I think this is something that we can talk about further. Um, we have we have a joint meeting scheduled for, I think it was March March sixteenth. Yep. Um, it's just it's this has been an extended discussion. I think a lot of us have had. Um, with multiple, we got water fees, sewer fees, planning fees, impact fees. Um, we just want to make sure that we're not limiting development by these fees. Uh, we might want to take a look at the impact fees. Um, there are provisions that the planning board had been working on, but we did not feel comfortable passing them on. We just didn't really have enough time or uh, bounce it off enough people to get something that we felt comfortable recommending. Um, so um, I have nothing formal to propose tonight, but just something to think about for um, in terms of impact fees, and we'll talk about it next month. All right, thank you, James. Yep. We have no quick claim deeds or installment contracts. Um, under abatements and supplements, we do have one item that uh, re relates to our uh, last meeting is we uh, assessed a tree growth penalty on the wrong map and lot piece. So is, uh, let's see, is, we don't have anybody from the assessment, so. No, we no. don't need any. No, so. It's just a change. Um, so first we'll need to have a motion to rescind our January 26th motion. Is I believe Ed made the original motion. Yeah, he did. And Mark seconded it, Mark is gone. So, um, Ed, would you like to rescind your motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. So that rescinds our last motion. So now we need to have a new motion to apply the penalty against the new law. The new tax map and law is R066-6-1-A. As of April 1st, 2020. So it's the same as before. Is they took it out of the tree growth. It's where the uh, solar field is going. The amount of the penalty was $8,780 against the owner. If there's no further discussion, is I'll recommend a motion to accept. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. Thank you. All right. We have no second public comment. We have no executive session. Nope. Um, on the other business and non-agenda items, I just want to you know, put out for the public that we're going to adjourn our regular meeting, and then we're going right into a budget review. Is that will also be telecast. Um, we will be doing the budget review for the general government, the administration, the town hall, the debt service, the town clerk, and general assistance, public agencies, miscellaneous, the transfers in BCTV. 
Does anybody else have anything to add to the meeting? Yeah, Tom, I just I, I want to reach out and and kind of convey some of the the feedback I've gotten concerning uh, the, the town hall hours uh, over last meeting has been a lot of negative feedback um, pertaining to that particular issue. Um, it's kind of all over the page, but I think that um, more for folks who work later feel that they would not have an opportunity uh, to utilize the services at town hall. Uh, with the new hours that are being proposed and implemented. Um, so they were quite vocal about that. And I think that obviously we, I know we initially stated it would be for a trial period, but I think it would be important to maybe convey data to the public uh, about why it's being done. More importantly, uh, what's the cost benefit analysis of, of doing it? You know, we're paying so much money for overtime, number one. Uh, number two, um, how many people actually come in during that period of time and, and utilize that service, I think would be important to let everybody know and, and, and kind of, uh, I, I'm for the hours, I think. Um, I'm not sure. I think it would be best that we have some sort of data to back up fact that there, there's it's it's better to do it this way instead of costing the town x amount of dollars uh for maybe five people who come in throughout a you know three a month or two or whatever 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 that number may be i think it would be important to maybe uh, convey that to the residents and so that they have a better understanding of why those hours are being proposed any thoughts well, I, it, when we discussed it last time, I had said that the uh, leaving it open at least one night, you know, till six o'clock or six thirty, is I, I know is back when I was working out of town is I would have to depend on family members a lot of time to do my business in town, you know, because we weren't back here yet. Um, right. So is but is I, I've gotten a couple comments. I haven't had a lot um, in that that seemed to be the the biggest bone of contention was not being open late at least once is sure. um so that maybe that's something that we can uh look at you know as far as uh how many people come in i don't know if patty has a way of tracking that or not is um but i'm sure i'm sure she has some uh, general idea about how things work yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the data exists. I think it's just important to let everybody know this is not just willy-nilly thought process. And then there, there's a reason behind uh, the proposal. And it, I think it's consistent. I think, he, you know, people uh, would be more aware of in concrete hours and, and, how they, um, and how they exist. I don't know how many times I've been down there uh, and, and forgot that, you know, we weren't open or, or, or what have you, but or we had a different hour. So... I think it's consistency is important, but if we need to meet somewhere in the middle or at least provide the data uh, to show the reasoning behind what we're doing, I think would be good. You have some input, Patty? Um, yeah, Ed and I talked about this and I started sure. collecting some data. It's readily available. Um, so I'll put together a spreadsheet. Probably what's best is to rescind your motion. Um, and then we'll just uh, present the data at the next meeting and maybe adjust the hours or whatever um, and go from there. Any other comment from the board? New hours haven't taken effect yet, have they? No, they were scheduled to take effect February 22nd. Right. So we can rescind that. Our next meeting is the 23rd. So, um, that gives me two weeks to put something together with the data and um, then I'll need two weeks to give notice to my staff of the new hours. So would we really, would, we, new hours. <laughs> would we really need to rescind our motion right now then? Is, no, we can, we can wait until you give us some more data to, to uh, show us where we need to go on this. So is, if it's not gonna happen till the end of February anyways, no, we can we can always you know work in between now and then to do this. 
Well, you'll have to come back and revoke. That the, um, the new hours would go into effect before, before we the have next meeting. the data to look at. So, so. all right. We might want to um, start over, I guess, so to speak. Um, so just rescind that motion and then we'll revisit it on the 23rd. Did we do that? The last motion, last meeting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who who made the motion, Patty? Do you know? Uh -huh. Let me check. Oh, it. I think it was Ed, but let me just. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to see in the. I think that's the best way to handle it. Um, I agree. And we'll just come back to it. All right. It was Ed and Mark. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to rescind? The new town hall That's hours. So moved. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right. As I'll go through the budget, uh, through the uh, roll, is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. All right. Thank you, Patty. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. Do we have any other business or non agenda items? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. A second? Second. 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 <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> all right. Um, is uh, all those in agreement? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, <laughs> so, Stay, stay with us because we're going to go right into our budget review. Just give us a few seconds to get our paperwork in order. Thank you. Um, we're gonna, we'll start with, uh, oh shoot, excuse me. Well, lose a pen? No, I lost my wedding ring. <gasps> Popped uh -oh. off. Uh -oh. Hang on, we have an emergency. Nope, I got it, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Heaven forbid. <laughs> Been on my finger for 40 years. <laughs> we'll start with general government. Um, there are some changes in this uh, spreadsheet. Um, I'll just point out the, the larger ones. Workman's compensation insurance, because we had a tragic accident uh, several years back, uh, the mod rate went through the roof, uh, and that uh, insurance increased by 85000 wow. So it's going to probably take about three years to work that out, hopefully. Um, I, I think there was a few other things that made it, but the big one was the accident we had last two years ago, March. Um, health insurance uh, really didn't change much. What they did is uh, we won't know until um, after the December. But they held it firm, no increase in the past six months, but it's, it went back up. It'll go back up, I'm sure. Um, legal fees, we've been very, very busy. Um, with legal fees, I always pride myself on reducing legal fees, but lately uh, some of them are uh, things that we have to defend uh, or just get advice on. Um, so we up, up that for uh, 10,000 um, this year. Hopefully we won't need it. Um, otherwise, we uh, street lights, which Tom mentioned last meeting, uh, we reduced that by 30, almost $31,000. Uh, these LEDs are, are working uh, nicely. And we also reduced our uh, s traffic signal lighting um, by quite a bit because we don't seem to be spending as much money on that as well. Our l property and liability insurance went up, but that's because uh, of the new fire station and, uh, and the police station addition. So we, we saw some increases there. 
overall, it's a $67,000 increase. Most of it, as I said earlier, is coming from the workman's comp. Any questions on general government, general expense? Going once, going twice? Yes. Let's nope. move. No. Nope. Administration. Uh, we've had we had a uh, three percent increase across the board uh, for wages. Uh, as advised, uh, we are staying in line with what the unions are getting. Uh, so. There's no fighting back and forth. We took out a part-time position and we had it in um, <clears throat> a full-time upstairs. Um, so you see a little bit of an increase there. Um, we didn't increase the work, the selectman's compensation. I know they love their job, so <laughs> we thought we'd leave it alone. Um, otherwise, uh, there's really not a lot of changes there. Some traveling and uh, training increase. We've had somebody who has expressed an interest of going back to school. Uh, so we put that funding in there, which, which we have had that in our personnel policy for quite a long time. There's never been any, seemed to be any interest, uh, but we've had one person, one uh, staff person, who I'm pretty confident will do well and, and he'll hopefully stay with us for a long time. So and, um, overall, it's a $66,000 increase. Any questions on administration? Going once, okay. I'm gonna jump to um, the miscellaneous real quick and public agencies. Let me start with it. Let's start with the public agencies. Um, this one involves coast busing which is our largest uh, expense. Um, this would be the second or third year that we've funded them at the same level. They haven't increased it. Uh, they've rerouted some stuff and they think they found some cost savings. It's uh, important that we continue to fund that and um, it provides a good service to people getting back and forth to work or uh, other. We took out our Christmas decorations. We're not funding that. I also took out the American Legion, 1500 has been, uh, that was usually for their community dinner. They didn't have it last year and I'm not sure they're gonna have it this year. So I thought we'd hold off on that this year. Um, what else did we find? And York County Shelter, um, I didn't fund that. It's a small amount, but I've tried to cut back on areas that I think we could uh, save a little bit of money here and there, adds up. So, um, and we kept the Memorial Day Parade funding in there, which I th is very important. So that's our public agencies. Um, not a lot of changes there except for reductions. Debt service, um, we have a, a over time, it always goes down a little bit. Last year, it was 542,000 for our bonds, which is because of the increase in the stations. The bonds, just as the public doesn't know, has to do with the two fire trucks uh, that we did one year, and also the clock tower and the, and the windows in the auditorium we replaced. Um, and then this last year and this year, uh, we have the um, fire station uh, bond to start up and hopefully in June we'll be able to sell the fire station and, and utilize that funding for uh, debt service for the, for the station. We put in 3% on the county budget. I have not received any numbers on that yet but they usually hold the line pretty well. And I also put in, because I have, I talked to Super, I talk, I've been emailing back and forth with the superintendent um, and asking what she thought they might, where they might be. They're just starting their process of their budget process. So just for the numbers, I put in 5%. Last year they were a little bit low, less than 5%, but in previous years they've been more than 5%. So with this pandemic and the funding coming from the federal government and the state, it's really a crapshoot what, what they'll see uh, and what 
and it's like a, trying to read a crystal ball to tell what the future is going to be for the kids and coming back to school. So we'll have to wait. I d did schedule, try to schedule, tell her that I'd like to have them come before the Board of Selectmen like Steve Conley did, and uh, she'll plan on doing that uh, as soon as they have a better idea of where their numbers are. Any questions on that section? Pretty straightforward. Um, the next area we will do is planning and assessing, and, which involves code enforcement. Which tab? We've uh, fine-tuned uh, this the planning budget. Uh, we've dropped that by sixteen thousand dollars this year. Just looking at things, uh, reduce the health insurance. Um, and also reduce contracted services. James, who's been doing the planning, most of that expense was with uh, Southern Maine Planning and Development with Lee Jay's work. Uh, and James, which I expected to happen, has picked up more and more of that so we don't have to use uh, Lee Jay as much. But he is a phone call away if James, he has any questions. But I think James and his department have done a, a great job in uh, handling that. Assessing. I, I have not got a uh, response from Paul um, McKenney, who's the um, MRI group, but I added in 3%. That's usually how they come in. We don't have any real exorbitant increases this year with them. Um, and uh, we did have a, uh, we have a company that we contracted with through them um, that's going to be doing all our personal property to kind of bring that up to date. Um, I can't wait for them to get out on the street and start uh, doing some investigation and finding where things are. Uh, we, we've been relying on that to be done by uh, declarations, and it's, it's, sometimes people will send these declarations in, and otherwise some of them just ignore us. So this way we, we can police that better. Um, any questions on assessing or planning? Okay, um, and we'll let Patty hand, oh, Patty's budget. Uh, we do have a new person in the office for Patty. I met her uh, yesterday. I think she's a great addition. We look forward to keeping her for a while. She's very positive. She's been working in local government and another office, so uh, different software, but she's picked it up, I guess, pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Let's see. Patty's budget actually reduced, uh, was decreased by 2.2%. By um, of course, as union wages have gone up this year. Um, we'll be in contact negotiations next January, and we'll see how that goes. Um, Part-time wages went down. Uh, she's using less of that, and a lot of it is... Uh, Election clerks have stayed the same. We, have a, we won't have much for, hopefully, elections. Otherwise, you look at the, uh, your, your change, it's a lot of decreases. Patty's done a great job holding her budget and finding places we can make cuts. So any questions on the town clerk? you got Patty here, so if you have any questions of her, Well, yeah. so I'll speak at once. Mm -hmm. uh, general assistance is, uh, we have been budgeting 10000 for as long as I've been here. Um, we, year to date, we've only spent 2800 uh, So hopefully that means everybody in Berwick is working and only a few people need help. But the money's there if we need it, and I'm surprised it's stayed so flat even during this pandemic. So that's a good sign. Um, any other questions on uh, general assistance? Now with Lynn gone, we have a new person. Julie's picking that up, and she's picked it up pretty quick and getting her feet wet. She had somebody today, I think, coming in, so um, she'll, be, she'll be a quick... Any other questions on that? Make sure I have everybody covered here. And now we're going to talk about BCTV. 
Okay, good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Patty. BCTV. Steve? Excuse me? Do you want me to start the video? Yes. We're going to show you a video real quick, and then we'll go through the numbers um, for BCTV. In 2021, Berwick Community TV celebrates 10 years in operation. Our first equipment was purchased in November 2011. That is 10 years of providing Berwick residents, near and far, with live and recorded coverage of town and school board meetings, along with local events. Programming is seen on two Comcast channels, our YouTube page and through the BCTV On Demand page on the town's website. Over the last 10 years, we have strived to increase our live coverage of meetings and events, ensure that residents in Berwick have an opportunity to see, hear, and participate in their local government, provide coverage and PSAs for town departments, MSAD 60 schools, and organizations, and offer a public access station where resident voices can be heard. As a public access station, Berwick Community TV has always been completely funded through the franchise fees received from Comcast. This is an annual fee charged by the Town of Berwick to Comcast for using public property Berwick owns as right-of-ways for its cable. Franchise fees depend on cable subscribers only, this does not include internet-only customers. We are a commercial-free and show videos without interruption. We provide a slideshow every three hours informing viewers of meeting times, local nonprofit information and events, holiday closures, voting updates, and special dates to remember. This is a free service provided to all nonprofits and community groups in and around Berwick. It also includes statewide programs and services available to residents. During COVID-19, BCTV stepped up to the plate and were one of the first stations in Maine to offer a hybrid meeting format. We created public service announcements and slides to inform on everything from free meals to operations in town. BCTV provides an emergency information ticker that scrolls across the bottom of screens to all town departments. With COVID-19, the tickers notified and informed residents of changes to office hours, how to access services, how to find meetings, and many other bits of information that need to get out quickly. In programming both channels, I try to maintain a 70% public educational and or governmental programming, and 30% of the videos are by other public access stations, along with the public domain movies and shows. The BCTV committee consists of five residents who meet with the director to review budget, operations, and goals. Oh my, how we have grown. We have two stations. Comcast Channel 22 is public educational, and Comcast Channel 95 is government only. Both channels stream 24 hours a day, seven days a week at www.berwicktv.org. We now have a full-time director, a part-time 15 hour per week assistant director and a broadcast technician slash slideshow creator. In 2012, we produced fewer than 60 videos, including government meetings. According to a search in archive.org in 2019, we live streamed and recorded 179 videos. In 2019, our YouTube channel received 4,234 views from January to October this year, we went up by over 50% with 10,601 views. In 2019, our on-demand site views were 2,930. This year, we have almost doubled that with 5,540 views. Our archive.org site has had 8,400 views combined. Since 2018, we have produced 526 videos which can be streamed from YouTube and www.archive.org by searching for Berwick Community TV. We now produce a weekly program called BCTV News which gives up-to-date information 
on town departments and the work they are doing, board meetings, COVID-19 updates for York County and Berwick, and school information interviews and other newsworthy items in town are included with the news. Every year, BCTV has managed to roll over funds received from franchise fees into the next year's budget. I began volunteering with BCTV in 2012. Over the last eight years, I've worked hard to provide a public access station that Berwick residents can depend on and go to for government meetings and local events. Almost all the goals outlined in BCTV operational plan of 2014 have been met. I am still seeking to establish a network of volunteers through a mentor program or the schools, and I hope to establish training for residents wishing to get involved. However, both may need to wait for the end of COVID-19. I am also working on a three to five year operational plan that will provide guidance for our growth and continued operations. These items will help us keep moving forward and hopefully keep BCTV around for another 10 years. Capital expenditures for the next year include a backup battery power surge protector system for our service. The original one is 10 years old and during the last power surge, it died. We would like to purchase two new video cameras with streaming capabilities. As mentioned earlier, we are still using three of the original cameras purchased in 2011. While these do work, we have experienced some problems with one of them as far as the sound is concerned. Another capital project will be installing a camera in the cupola at the top of the town hall. This will take pictures of the prime site every 10 minutes and will be displayed on our webpage. We need to run electricity and cable up to that space and then back down to our control room. Lastly, we are trying to decide whether to purchase a new TV screen for the lobby area or wait until COVID is over and use the boardroom TV, which is now being used for hybrid meetings. Our goal is to have something residents can watch while waiting, but to also have our slideshow display the different organizations, upcoming events, meetings, etc., along with where they can find our channels, whether it be over Comcast or via www.berwicktv.org. That's it. That's it. Let's talk about BCTV. Um, as you can see, there's been quite a few changes, uh, even over the last year. Uh, really positive changes. Uh, we've added Ralph, um, and uh, so we've had an increase in our part-time wages. Um, and believe me, I think we get a bang for a buck with all our volunteers and 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 Ralph. And it's quite amazing what this group produces. Um, we've seen just a small increase. Again, everybody got their raises this year. Um, otherwise, uh, there's not a heck of a lot you to say. Health insurance went down a little bit. Um, equipment purchases uh, went down. Um, we've got a good reserve, so uh, we, she didn't feel she had to do uh, fund that. Um, Equipment maintenance went down a little bit, but not much. And that's, we gotta have it taken care of, otherwise we won't have a station, so. Did we lose everybody? Yep. <laughs> no, we're still here. Yep. Um, so you only saw an increase of like 7,531. Um, I think, you know, it's a really an unknown. Every this. time we get a- um, Harry broke it, it's her fault. Microphone's not working. I think it was yours. Oh man, I don't know. But lure her back to fight her, fight back. Uh oh. What's going on? Did you hit anything? Technical difficulty? Yeah. 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 Jeremy. Yeah, Hi, Terry. Yes, we see you. <laughs> Thank you. Are we back on? Not yet. 
Can't see us at all. Yeah, I can. I, I see him on the TV. Well, I see Steve on the TV. You see us? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Steve can hear us. Yeah, we I can, can hear you, Ed. We can. Oh, okay. All can right. You hear me? I, I see you now. Go back. Can everybody hear me? Yes. I hear a nod from Ken. Yeah. Noah's in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. I'd say go for it. So uh, BCTV, we've seen a slight increase in, in that. Um, we're, as uh, was pointed out earlier in our meeting, we're very concerned about the revenue side. Um, so hopefully, um, I really encourage uh, that we are able to hopefully do sponsorships to keep the future of this uh, department running. Uh, they do amazing things. Um, and it's important that we continue to support them in any way we can. Any questions on BCTV at all? Okay. Job, That's all I have at this point. Um, just give you a, a brief oversight um, on the budget. Find my sheet. Um, overall, if we compare to what we had in our budget last year compared to this year, we've got, it's almost a 5% decrease, but um, we don't have the revenue that we had last year, uh, and we're not using any money from surplus to offset the taxes, and we're not uh, using any, we're not transferring any funding in from the uh, special accounts, reserve accounts. So the revenue side is, is going to be down a little bit, but um, I'm hoping that uh, we will be under 2% with the tax increase. Um, somewhere between 35 and 45 cents, but that all depends on the school. It's, I've, I've punched in 5%. It'd be nice if they could come in less than that, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I'll continue to update that as soon as I get more information. Um, the governor is keeping our revenue sharing at 3.5% this year. They promised not to tap into it. That's a real plus. And people are still buying new cars, and excise tax is still pretty strong. So both those are good things. So, any other questions of me? I do have financials going out to you before the end of the week for January, so you can see where we are the budget-wise. Um, we're in pretty good shape at this point. Um, if you just uh, which budgets are we going to be reviewing next? Next, uh, next. It will be next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. You'll be doing the library, police department, uh, recreation, and public works. Fire department, Dennis asked if we could move it to the 23rd of February. He had a conflict, and we had that kept open up just in case we had some things we had to change or go back to revisit. So if there's anything you want to revisit, please get back to me so we can get it into the schedule, and we'll talk more about it. But... Uh, Okay, next, next meeting will be the big money departments. Right. You know. So that'll but be next Tuesday at 6.30. Next 630. Tuesday at 6.30. We will be on the air and ready to go. All right. Any questions? Any comments? So, uh, actually, uh, I wanted to, I'm a little confused about next week. So are they, are we, is our meeting happening at the same time as the planning board? Or are they the same meeting or what's going on? Oh, they don't meet on Tuesdays. They meet on Thursdays. The oh, planning okay. board meeting we talked about in March, March 16th. That's next month. Right. So there's no, this is an off week. Okay. Off week for us. So, 
Yeah. So just be us, 6.30. Okay, no, I, I guess I was confused because I got a, an email from James about, uh, yeah, that, that it, yeah, it's March 16th. Okay. I thought yeah. that was next week. So I was just all confused. Not a problem. All, right, all cleared up now. Okay. Right. Very good. All right, guys. Have a good night. Thanks Thank for you. Thank you, Lisa. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Thank right. you, Lisa. See you next week.